Okay, so let's talk a little bit about significant figures. So significant figures is a way uh, that we express precision. We have some rules that we need to follow when we're talking about significant figures. First rule is that, is that non-zero numbers are always significant. For example, 5, 2, 4. We don't have a zero number there, so if I'm counting how many sig figs I have, I would say, well, I have three sig figs. It's non-zero numbers, so always count it as on, on significant figures. Now, if I have a zero on, on in my number, I need to check to see if the zero will count it or want is a sig fig. So the first rule when I'm talking about a zero, it's if the zero is in the left side. So if I have a 0 0.00017, all zeros are in my left side. So it does not count, it's a significant number. So if I need to say how many sig figs I have here, I will say, well, only two because all zeros are located in the left side of my number. Therefore, I cannot count them as significant numbers. Another rule is that if the zero is placed between um, non-zero numbers, for example, if I have a 4.002, so there's two zeros here, it's between on my non-zero numbers. Therefore, I count the zeros as sig figs. So if I need to say how many sig figs I have in this example here, four sig figs. Because the zeros, it's between two non-zero numbers. And uh, the third rule, which is kind of connected with the fourth rule related with the zeros, is that if I have a zero in my right side and I have a dot after the zeros, then I will count it as a sig fig. So how many sig figs do I have here? Because I have this dot, I know that all three here are on, I need to count in the sig figs. So one, two, three, four, I have four sig figs. The fourth rule that is connected with this third here is that if I have the same number, but now I do not have my dot point uh, placed at the end, so I won't count it the zeros as sig figs. So if I need to say how many sig figs I have here, I would say one sig fig. So just on reviewing, if it is non-zero numbers, I counted every single one. Non-zeros, I counted every one. So three sig figs. If I have a zero placed in the left side of my non-zero numbers, I won't count it as sig figs. It's sig numbers. It's if I have the zeros between non-zero numbers, I will count it them as sig figs. Therefore, have these two zeros placed between the four and two, so I have four sig figs. If I have the zero placed in the right side, then I need to check, do I have a dot at the end? If I do, I need to count the three as sig figs as well. So one, two, three, four, four sig figs. If I don't, then the zeros won't be counted. Another problem that students always face is related with the math. So I have some examples here about addition and subtraction and about multiplication and division. So I will start using, explaining about addition and multiplication, uh, or about multiplication and division, and then about addition and subtraction. Uh, and it's not complicated, it's a really simple rule. We just needed to understand them and then memorize it and it would be fine for the test.
So if we're talking about multiplication on and division, suppose I have 2, 0, 0 divided by 3.5. Um, no divided, let's multiply. 2, 0, 0 multiplied by 3.5. So I know I have a dot placed there. I have three sig figs here. I have non-zero numbers, so two sig figs. So for this rule, addition or multiplication, I'm checking how many sig figs each of my numbers has. And I will keep the same amount as the least on sig figs that I found. So between 2 and 3, 2 is smaller than 3. So my final answer, I will keep 2 sig figs. Okay, so I have 3 sig figs, 2 sig figs, I will keep 2 sig figs is my final answer. The same rule applied for division. I count how many sig figs I have in each one of my numbers. So if I have 2 and then 5, I still keep 2 sig figs. For addition and multiplication, now I'm not checking how many sig figs I have in my number. Addition and multiplication, I'm checking about precision. What I mean is that, suppose I have 1.26 and I'm adding 2.3. So, here I have two decimals, so I'm in the hundreds, um, it's more precise. Here I have one decimal. For this rule, I will keep the least, the one, I will keep the same amount in my final answer as I have the, as I have for the one that has the least um, number of decimals. So here I have one decimal, here I have two decimals. So my final answer, I will have only one decimal. If I do this addition, I have a, as a final answer 2.56, which I can say that is a 2.6. One decimal, one decimal. Remember, addition and subtraction, we're talking about precision. So this number is more precise, this number is least precise, and I will keep the same amount of sig figs as I have for the least precise. This is the tenth decimal place, this is the hundredths, so more precise, I'll keep one. What I like to do, um, and this is a helpful rule, no helpful rule, but it's really helpful for me is that if I have, for example, 4.004 and I have, I'm adding 3.01, I would say, well, I have three decimals, I have two decimals. Therefore, my final answer will be only two decimals. So this would be 7014, I would say 7.01, two decimals. I count how many decimal places I have here, three. How many I have here, two. And I say, well, two is smaller, I will keep two as my final answer. Yeah, it's, um, it's, sig figs is something that always bothers students. They always get mad. But if you keep in mind, when you're doing multiplication or division, you always wanna check how many sig figs and keep the least number of sig figs. And when we're doing addition and subtraction, you always counted the number of decimal places and keep the least ones. You should be fine.